All right, guys, I'm going to do the part two that I handed out at the very end of the class first and make that video and send it out to you guys because that's new and that's we've gone over the, all the other stuff in class, but I'll make another video separately that covers everything we did in class. So that one will be a lot longer, I think. Um, but uh, I don't know. We'll find out. Okay. But here we go. There's only four questions here, but they are kind of their own kind of you know, they're a problem, man. Anyway, uh, <laughs> number one, a store stocks uh, CDs as follows. 50% 50, 50 are brand A, 20% brand B, and the remainder are brand X. The store owner knows that 10% of brand A, 5% of brand B, and 20% of brand X are defective. The customer returns a defective CD, find the probability that it is brand X. Okay. So uh, let's draw a tree diagram here and just kind of get our, our bearings, okay? So we have three brands um, of CDs. I don't know what brand means, but I hope his name isn't Russell. Anyway, here we go. So we got brand A, brand B, brand X. Um, brand A is 50%. So that's 0.5 or 0 0.5 if you'd rather. Uh, brand B is 20% and brand X is the remainder. So that means brand X is 0 0.3 for 30%. Uh, that would total up to one or 100%. So that's brand X. If you're wondering how I got that, well, 5.5 and 0.2 make 0.7 and 0.7 plus that 0.3 would, would make that total up to one. So uh, A now, each of these could be defective or working. So I'm going to just label it as uh, defective or working. So D for defective, W for working. So the probability of defective, A, 10% of A are defective, which means 0 0.1, which means that 0 0.9 are working. For brand B, 5% are defective. Now, keep in mind that 0.5 is not the same as 0 0.05. 5% is 0 0.05, which means 95% work. Uh, and 20% uh, of brand B or brand X are defective. So that's a lot. Uh, so 0 0.2 are defective, which means 0 0.8 are working. So we know that this person who's returning a CD is a, has a defective CD. So what we want to do, I'm going to go ahead and actually find out all the probabilities um, just to be kind of thorough, but I will uh, answer the question after I've done the math. So to find the probability of each branch, you want to just multiply the branches. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.05. So let's put that, I guess we'll put that in blue, 0 0.05. So that's the uh, A and defective. Um, 0.5 times 0.9 is 0 0.45. Uh, 0.2 times 0 0.05, be careful about that, is 0 0.01. 0 0.2 times 0 0.95 is... 0 0.19, 0.19. Uh, 0.3 times 0.2 is 0 0.06, and uh, 0.3 times 0.8 is 0 0.24. Now, all of those added up should equal one. Um, you can check if you want to, but it should equal one. Um, you'll kind of notice that if you add these together, that's 0 0.5. If you add these together, it's 0 0.2. If you add these together, it's 0 0.3, which no coincidence, it matches that of uh, the numbers over there. Now think of it like this. Instead of thinking of it as probabilities, imagine instead that these are actual CDs out of 100, okay? That might make this easier to understand. So think of this as Five CDs, think of that as 45 CDs, one CD, 19 CDs, six CDs, and 24 CDs. That might make it easier. So this person bought a defective CD. So if you count up all the defective CDs, you would have uh, 
five, one, and six. So if you do the decimals, 0 0.05 plus 0 0.01 plus 0 0.06 is, I believe, 0.12. Um, but if you count up the CDs, like five, one, and six, that's 12 CDs, right? So there are think of it like that. There are 12 defective CDs. Now, out of the 12 defected, we're asked to find the probability that it was brand X. X had six defective CDs. So six of those 12 CDs that are defective are from brand X. So half of the defective CDs are from brand X. So if we know that this person got a defective CD, then there's a 50% chance that it was brand X, right? So you could say, you could say one half, you could say 0 0.5, doesn't really matter, but one half or 0 0.5 is the answer, okay? So I hope that makes a little more sense. If it helps to convert the probabilities into actual numbers, I think that that works, um, but the math is still technically the same. If you use the decimal versions, you would just have 0 0.06 over 0 0.12, which is still the same as six over 12, you know? It's still one half. All right, number two. An urn contains seven white and three red marbles. Two marbles are selected in succession without replacement. Given that the second marble is white, what is the probability that the first is red? So let's draw our little tree diagram. So we have two options, red marble or white marble. And we're choosing two, so that's the first uh, marble. So the second marble, it's either red or white. So it'd be our second round, right? Or if it's if we chose white, it could be red or white, same thing. So the probability for each of these, so red, there are three red, there's a total of nine marbles, right? Seven plus three is, I'm sorry, 10 marbles. Seven plus three is 10. So there are three out of 10 are red, which means that seven out of 10 are white. Now, if we chose, um, we kind of, draw the marbles here because you know why not you, you, you feel me you know what i'm saying i'm just gonna keep talking over while i fill this in so it doesn't seem awkward but it's getting kind of awkward all right oh crap i only need three of those <laughs> i'm just amazing myself sometimes all right hold on let me get black. all right so come on no 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 face face you could probably just fast forward a little bit. All right, I'm using black just to emphasize the fact that the uh, rest of these are white. So if I chose a red marble the first time, right, then my second pick, there are two out of nine are red. So two out of nine for red. Now, if I chose red the first time, there's a, uh, what is it? Seven out of nine chance that it's white. Seven out of nine for white. Now, if I chose a white marble the first time, then there's a three out of nine chance I choose red the second time, or there's a six out of nine chance that I choose white a second time. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and calculate our probabilities. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna do all of them again just to be thorough. I think that makes the final explanation just a little bit easier to understand, all right? So if you do three tenths times two ninths, that is, and I'm gonna have to simplify this, but that'd be six over 90, which would be uh, three over 45, which is the same as one over 15, I think. Okay, so one fifteenth, so I'm just gonna simplify those one fifteenth. Uh, and three tenths times seven ninths, so three times seven would be 21. Actually, I'm gonna leave them all with uh, the common denominator of 90, because that'll make things easier to add up at the end. So that would be six of, over 90, this would be 21 over 90. This one would be seven times three, which that's 21 over 90, and then this would be seven times six, which is uh, 42 over 90. All right, so again, if you add up all four of those, it should total one, but that's not what we need to do. Let's look at the question. Given that the second marble is white, so that would be either, uh, let's use a different color. That would be either this one or this one. So it's given that it's white, which occurs 
21 out of 90 and 42 out of 90. So if you put those two together, that means, so you're adding up those numbers, 21 and 42 make what, 63 out of 90? All right, so given the fact that it's white, which occurs 63 out of 90 times, so just, let's just say it occurred 63 times. Let's just say that, okay? What are the odds that the first marble was red? Which would be this case, right? It would be the one up here. So a red marble occurred before a white 21 out of those 63 times. So 21 times out of the 63, which would be, what, one third, I believe? Okay. That's one way you can think about the problem. Now, if that confused you, I'm sorry, but I did the best that I could. Um, so I know as a decimal, if you want to make these decimals, you kind of can. Uh, see, 21 divided by 90 is like 0 0.23 repeating. Uh, 42 divided by 90. Oops is 0.46 repeating. Okay. Now, if you add those two up, you get, um, you still get 0 0.63. No, wait, hold on, that's not right. Uh, plus 0 0.23333. Uh, you get 0.7. So if you add these up, you have the probability of 0 0.7. Okay. Hold on a second. I'm just checking something. You didn't. I didn't lose you. Okay. Divided by point. All right. So we're still good. I thought I said this, this, this did something wrong for a second. So if you add them up, the total is 0 0.7. So the, that's you know the second marble being white. That's what we're given. Okay. Second marble being white. Now the probability that it was red and white, or red came first, was this probability of 0.23, which is what we would put on top. So 0.23 divided by 0.7, and that's what I was checking because it looked kind of funny, is still technically, if you do the 0.23 repeating, keep that in mind. That's why it was weird for me. So if you do the 0.23333333 divided by 0 0.7, you get one third. Um, so because of that decimal, it's a little bit funny. I think it's better the other way around that I explained it, where, look, there are 90 events occurring in total. Um you know, 21 times a red marble occurred before white. Uh, there were, you know, 63 times in total where white occurred second, and 21 of those times a red occurred before it. So 21 out of 63, it's still one third. It makes a little more sense to me, but you can be your own person and figure out whatever you want to do, okay? Anyway, number three, what is the probability of exactly five successes in 16 repeti repetitions of a Bernoulli process with a six Success probability of 0 0.8. This one is all about a formula. And I'm using hand gestures. Yeah, I know you can't see that, so I'm wondering why I'm doing it anyway. Anywho, our formula for Bernoulli is combination of n choose r times p to the r power and q, that's not a q, q to the n minus r power. So all we need to know is n, r, p, and q in our formula will be all set. So n is a total number of trials or repetitions. In this case, we're going to do this trial 16 times. So n is going to be 16. R is the number of successes that we're looking to find. Now I'm looking for five successes, so r is 5. p is the probability of success, which is 0 0.8, which means q, the probability of failure, is 0 0.2. Because 0 0.8 plus 0 0.2 would make that 1, right? So Q, uh, P is 0 0.8, Q is 0 0.2. Now remember the exponents. Um, R is the exponent for P, which is just 5. And N minus R is the exponent for Q. Uh, Q. So N is 16, 5 is R. So 16 minus 5 is 
11. So there you go. Basically what the exponents mean is, remember, if you're doing it 16 times and you're looking for five successes, well, five goes with the success probability, which if you succeed five times, then you fail 11 times. So five, because that's how many times you succeed, 11, because that's how many times you fail. So that's why five goes to the probability of our um, success and 11 goes with our probability of failure. So that's kind of the way I think of it. So you could just type that in the calculator. I have no clue what it is because I did not bring one of those calculators home with me. But uh, yeah, I'm sure you could just type it in the calculator and you're all set. Okay, number four. A student attends economic class at random with probability of 0.8. What is the probability that she misses class exactly twice in 20 class meetings? Looking at you, uh, Mary Beth. Okay. Anywho, uh, this is an economics class. So again, it's still a Bernoulli process, still a Bernoulli trial, but we really, really, really need to be careful about what we choose for P and Q and N and R here, lowercase. So remember, it's still the same formula. N choosing R, P to the R power, Q to the N minus R power. N, we are going to class 20 times. That is n. That's not a difficult number to find. Now remember, r is the number of successes. Okay, so if we miss, I know it says we miss two classes, but that means we go to class 18 times. Be careful of that because that's tricky. It doesn't say 18 in the problem, but it's it's inferred because you're missing exactly two classes, which means you're making exactly 18. So be careful about that. Now the probability that we'd make it to class is 0 0.8, which means the probability we don't make it to class is 0 0.2. So let's plug it all in. N is 20, R is 18. We're gonna have P, which is 0 0.8 to the 18th power. And we're gonna have Q, which is 0 0.2 to the second power. Because remember that means we're making it to class 18 times and we're failing to make it to class two times. That's what I'm trying to find here. If you're wondering where that two comes from, it's because if I make the class 18 times, it means I'm not making it to class two. But remember, you can also just think n minus r, which is 20 minus 18. So it's uh, two, okay? Ooh, look, 2018. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. All right, just type that in a calculator, you're done. I don't know what the answer is because I didn't, like I said, I didn't bring my calculator. Don't hate me, because you ain't me. That's the end of the video. Good luck. Uh, remember to tune into the other video where we talk. I do what we did in class. All right. Bye bye.